Case in point, the previous presentation, I was looking at a project in Idaho about 10 years ago. We came across a 1950s Studebaker on forestry land, and yes, it was indeed an archaeological site. No joke. You have to be careful while you do exploration. Okay, Cisco Metals. Uh, we created Cisco Metals in 2018. As for most of you know, our group, we're mostly focused on precious metals, but we decided to diversify into base metals. We're very bullish on base metals, still are. It's a slow patient process, but uh, it was an ideal time to do significant acquisitions. So uh, for those of you who are familiar with Canadian uh, iconic mine sites, we acquired Pint Point in 2018. Uh, been advancing that project. We're now sitting at about 8 billion pounds in the ground, 3.7 million tons of lead zinc. So uh, about 62 million tons running 6.2 lead zinc on average, all inferred. Uh, but we're moving quickly towards converting the resource at point point to uh, measured indicated. A uh, drill program this winter will complete that task. Uh, last year, uh, we uh, started negotiations with Glencore to acquire the old Gaspé copper site in the Gaspé Peninsula. Uh, having a huge database from 45 years of mining at Gas Bay Copper, we we're able to quickly ascertain that uh, open pit again resource in this case, we're looking at about uh, 3 billion pounds of copper in situ. So two significant residual assets from brownfield sites, and uh, we're basically advancing both projects. So gas pay copper is owned by Glencore. Uh, we should be able to close that transaction uh, in by, the end, by year end, in which case we're going to have 100% interest. I'll get into the details in a minute. Uh, suffice it to say that right now we have a pit constrained inferred resource of 456 million tons running 0.31% copper. Infrastructure is uh, still in place, of course. Uh, the deposit of the old mine site still sits be uh, beside the town of Murdochville. Uh, that's the windle down now to about 650 uh, inhabitants. Uh, the current uh, economy is run by uh, seasonal tourism. But we have uh, road access to uh, the port town of Gaspé that still has a deep water port and facilities to export concentrate. Substation is still on site. Uh, Gas Bay Copper, at least in Quebec, was quite iconic for about 45 years, producing 142 million tons of a uh, million tons of 0.9 percent copper. Uh, built in the 50s with an uh, on-site smelter, uh, both uh, open pit and uh, but mostly underground bulk tonnage operation. In terms of underground operation, it was in its time the biggest underground mine in Quebec. Uh, Ruben, bulk tonnage Ruben pillar operation with pillars about 35 meters in height. Very spectacular operation. It shut down in 99. The smelter shut down in 2006, uh, 2002, sorry. The site was remediated. Here you see the former smelter location beside the flooded pit. And on the right-hand side, you see the town of Murdochville adjacent to the old mine site. In green is the outline of uh, our model pit right now, so it would essentially be an expansion of the old uh, Mount Copper uh, pit operation. And for those of you who are wondering, uh, Naranda ran it for 45 years. The reason they didn't expand the pit at the time is because, well, the smelter was sitting beside the pit. So classic error of building a smelter on top of mineralization, and that prevented Naranda from doing any kind of pit expansion in this time. North-South cross-section, basically it's a Devonian stratigraphy, calcareous uh, clastic rocks and limestones. So uh, Mount Copper is a, a porphyry system as such in terms of being dominated by stockwork of copper moly veins, but it's not sitting in a volcanic sequence, it's sitting in a carbon, uh, carbonate sequence, hence just potassic alteration, uh, no sericite or argillite or argillic. The limestone horizons were replaced by scarn. You see the main scarn horizons here in red, a BC zone. Bulk of the underground uh, production came from the C zone. But all told, uh, the underground operation produced about 70. Do we have a pointer on this? Laser? I don't think so, eh? Oh, there is one here. Okay, yeah. So the uh, total underground operation produced 70 million tons of 1.5% copper. And uh, the shallower Copper Mountain pit 
which went down to death about 160 meters, produced about 70 million tons of 0.37. What we envisage right now is just, again, an expansion of the Mount Copper Pit to a depth of 600 meters, and this is where our 456 million ton inferred resource sits. In terms of potential, underground potential, when I, I worked there in the 90s, and our team led the discovery of a buried second porphyry system called Porphyry Mountain, and uh, it was drilled off by Naranda, but uh, the resource was never published. This is the resource table for uh, Mount Copper, so 0.16% copper cut off. It was modeled at 380 US copper a pound with uh, FX of 1.27. That gave the 456 million tons. Total copper is 0.35. Sulfide copper is 0.31. The difference is a modeled oxide zone. And part of the reason uh, we drilled it off and we're continuing to drill off the resource uh, next year, we drilled 28,000 meters this year uh, is to, to convert inferred to measure and indicated and uh, to also quantify the oxide sulfide ratio and thirdly to quantify any moly byproduct. So if all goes well, uh, by the time we finish drilling it, we have another 15,000 meters to go next, uh, starting next June. We hope to increase uh, the tonnage uh, by 20, 30 million tons and the grade to about 0.33 uh, with hopefully a MOLLE credit running uh, close to uh, 0 0.05, which would be recoverable. So this is the current block model. You see the, our, our model Whittle Pit here to a depth of 600 meters. This is the actual pit. So naturally, the core of the deposit runs higher grade at about 0.5% copper underneath the old pit. And uh, the margins are obviously very low grade, running 0.2, uh, 0.15 to 0.2%. So the good news is that our starter pits are gonna be cored at higher grade material for the first uh, four years. Projected mine life right now at 70,000 tons a day would be about 17 years for the entire uh, pit resource. So these are the drill results that were drilled into the Porphyry Mountain system, a deep-seated system starting at a depth of uh, 1,200 to 1,000 meters. The last hole was actually drilled by Extrata in 2012 and they hit a whopper intersection of 822 meters running 0.94 copper and 0.07 moly. So it's a fantastic example of a buried Porphyry system. This data was never published before and the resource was not uh, calculated on, uh, on this array of uh, drill intersections. So obviously we can't ignore it. There is potential for an underground bulk tonnage operation here in the longer term, possibly uh, block caving or assisted block caving. So uh, starting next summer, we're gonna start uh, re-drilling that entire volume to at least obtain an inferred resource on the Porphyry Mountain system as future upside and complement to the uh, Mount Copper operation. So then the uh, Glencore deal, the purchase was essentially through a 25 million US convertible note into a Cisco shares as units at 40 cents per unit, including half warrant exercisable over three years at 46 cents. So Glencore also has three years to exercise the note at 6% interest, in which case they will uh, and their current outstanding shares, they would own fully diluted 38% of the company. The only other milestone payment will be 20 million US upon commercial production. So the real commitment for us is uh, spending 55 million Canadian over the next four years to bring the project to FID, including feasibility, full permitting, and any IBAs required. Glencore will retain a 1% royalty on the Mount Copper operation and 3% on any future underground operation. And of course, most importantly, Glencore is to retain uh, offtake on 100% of all copper and moly uh, concentrates. And that deal has uh, now been signed and agreed to. Back to Pine Point, uh, we've been working on the project for four years. We published two PEAs. The 2022 update produced a MPV of 605 after tax IR 25% at US 137 zinc, which is two year VWAP right now. 
And uh, we're advancing the project, again, brownfield site with access to uh, power substation, roads and rail. So basic infrastructure in place. And uh, <clears throat> in our current model right now, Point Point has the potential to become a top 10 zinc producer, producing an exceptionally clean concentrate. It's right beside the town of Hay River. Kaminko ran the operation until 88. And from Hay River, uh, shipment concentrate would be shipped to Edmonton and then access to the Pan-Canadian CN line. Very important when you're looking at any base metal development project to consider uh, ready access to infrastructure, either rail or sea. In terms of concentrate quality, as some of you might have seen this already, uh, we published this three years ago, comparing point point concentrate quality to the five biggest zinc producers on the planet. So for both major elements and trace elements, point point is exceptionally clean. And because it's free of deleterious elements, it's also exceptionally rich, running 59% zinc compared to a global average of about 50%. So this uh, puts Point Point not only <clears throat> in uh, an exceptional position in terms of potential development, it would also have the potential to produce an exceptionally high-grade clean concentrate. So we consider Point Point uh, one of the premier zinc development projects in North America simply by virtue of the fact that if you consider a critical mass of minimum 20 million tons of economic ore, ready infrastructure and quality of concentrate, it's the only project right now in North America that fits the bill in all three cases. <clears throat> We have agreements in, uh, in the North Northwest Territory with uh, two indigenous groups, the Nukuwe First Nation, the Northwest Territory Métis Nation, and the Catalodice. And uh, we've uh, initiated IBA framework discussions uh, this year, and they'll carry on into 2023 as part of the permitting process. So in a nutshell, we expect FID to be reached at point point uh, in three years' time. Gas Bay Copper with the Glencore Agreement, we have a four-year window to reach the same at a total cost of 90 to $100 million. And uh, right now, uh, we're considering a partnership at Point Point to bring the financing required to bring both projects to FID within a three, four-year time frame. So both excellent development projects. I should point out Pine Point is very much economic at current zinc prices, but gas bay copper requires $4 copper, which uh, unfortunately we no longer have as of June, but we're very bullish on copper and we're very confident that over the next four years, uh, copper will certainly reach, go back to $4 US and probably do much better. So takeaways, as the globe shifts towards a greener, sustainable economy coupled with post-COVID infrastructure stimulus, we believe that this uh, will dramatically increase gold base metal demand, uh, but if certainly for copper, zinc, and nickel, we're facing uh, deficits, especially in zinc, as only a handful of serious development zinc projects are in the global pipeline. As far as copper concerned, very well cited quote this uh, in October 22 by Woodmac report, when you're considering global demand for decarbonation versus <clears throat> supply, we're headed for an almost unattainable gap between green energy, copper demand, and mining supply. It's a very real problem, and at this point, uh, I don't think there is a solution. We are going to have a copper deficit as well. So that puts uh, Cisco Metals well positioned to capitalize on a rapidly evolving market with exposure to both zinc and copper. Gas paid copper right now is the best development <coughs> copper development project in eastern North America. And Pine Point has the potential to be one of Canada's outstanding lensic pines. Thank you very much. <laughs>